Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another incredible episode of Empowered Conversations, where I have amazing conversations with extraordinary people who are out in the world doing beautiful things in service to others and just all around living their best fulfilled lives. And that is none other than my extremely special and amazing, awesome, through the roof, exciting guest today, Jeremy Rock Smith. Y'all, Jeremy Rock Smith graduated from the Culinary Institute of America and began his career in classical French cuisine, working in fine restaurants in the United States and abroad. In 2005, Jeremy's love for teaching and natural foods led him to Canyon Ranch in the Berkshires, where he applied his classical training to creating healthy cuisine in the kitchen and as a demonstration chef. Jeremy joined Kripalu Kitchen in 2010 as Chef de Cuisine and has served as their executive chef ever since. He is the author of the Kripalu Kitchen, Nourishing Food for Body and Soul. And in 2019, Jeremy competed on the Food Network's popular cooking show, Chopped. Boy, I can't wait to hear all about that. So, everybody, whoop, whoop, drum roll, please help me in welcoming my most fabulous guest, Jeremy Rock Smith. Woo! Hey. Now I'm What's going happening? to add you. Okay, so now I'm going to add you to the, uh, there you are, there you are, invite. Now you just got to, and then turn I'm your in. volume down. <laughs> I, I'm in. I'm Tim Yay, Bar. There you are. I got awesome. You Fan Let's for Catalpa. Okay, so hold on. I got you propped turn, up on two angles. Turn my turn volume, volume down. down. Okay, why? Okay. I should be on mute. There we go. Fantastic. Perfect. So, holy freaking cow, Jeremy. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing, <laughs> doing all right. A, yeah. You know? well, it's like there's so much exciting excitement. You know, the first 15 minutes, like, okay, hold on. We need to stop. This is part of the empowered pause, conversation. Go. Pause, I go, know. pause, go. So know, what, we met in person last week for what, yes. an hour and a half? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. And how fabulous was it? It was a whirlwind. So what, to just tell the audience, we met two weeks ago through a mutual friend. I happened to be flying down through Asheville. So I took a longer layover in Charlotte just to hang out with you. And boom, magic began. And you cooked me an amazing meal in that time period. I can't remember the last time someone actually cooked me food. Those deviled eggs were phenomenal. I'm still Oh my God, thank them. you. Thank you. Yeah, that, they were good. I was so excited. I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to make him a deep, freaking delicious dinner. And I was like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? And I thought about my kale salad. And then I thought about, you know, doing my swordfish. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to do a theme. I'm going to start out. I'm going to do like my eight. And I was like, oh, Asian. Perfect. And you're, and, and remember I text you. I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, wait, hold on a crap. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. He might be like vegan or vegetarian. And I was like, do you have any like food sensitivities or are you, are you, are you like, you know, vegan, et cetera. And you went, what did you say? What did you text me? It was hilarious. I just wrote back, I'm flexitarian. I'm a flexitarian. So, yeah, I went, that's me. Yeah. I about dropped my phone. I was laughing so hard. So I chose I an adapt to my thing. surroundings. I adapt to my surroundings and my internal needs all the time. In other words, I'm a Gemini. I, guess just I love that. Say. I love that. I'm a Pisces. So Gemini, when's your birthday? June 1st. June 1st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm March 8th. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so, so I guess <laughs> Gemini's and Pisces, they got to get along, clearly. I would think so. I would yeah, think I know. So. Look at us now. I, think we're, we're, we're I know. Explosion. It's like, boom, boom. It's those around us might freak out more than Right, you. exactly. Like, oh, my God, look at this energy. Like, look look at them. Like, right? I don't know if I can handle all this. No, handle it, guys. This is this is dynamic duo right here. <laughs> so oh my gosh jeremy thank you so much i mean yeah, I thanks for having me you are so welcome that day we scheduled you i, I remember when we're on the i was on the elliptical i think you were walking you yeah know, i was and, walking up the hills backwards and you were on the elliptical you yes! were turning the beat around gloria <laughs> Stefan was playing in the background i think we had it all going on at the same time yeah, yeah <laughs> it was, it was like, instant connection at that point yeah. 
Yeah, I felt like so excited. I felt like I was like just like gra- levitating off of the elliptical during our conversation. <laughs> and thank you. We got to. I got to give a shout out. We got to give a shout out to Jessica Duravage Carriage. Ja, 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 Jessica, my girl. God, I love her. For yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, so she she does all the online programming at Capalo, and she sent me. It's funny because she sent me her video. She goes, "Hey, I've got this friend. She's doing this thing," and she sent me the video through the phone. And honestly, I could barely see you through the video. I can only <laughs> hear you, and you were so hilarious that I was like, "Absolutely, I want to hang with that person." So thanks, I'm glad we're here. I'm glad we made it, and it happened very quickly. So I'm yes, glad. it did. Yeah, it did. It's like it's amazing. Like when you know when it all when the universe just comes together. You know. Flow, baby, flow. I know. <laughs> well, Jeremy, we, oh my gosh, I'm just going to ask my very first question because what I like to do, you know, the reason you're here in Powered Conversations, clearly you are empowering others through your gifts, through, and with you, it, it's your nutritious, delicious food. And I know you didn't start out, you know, initially, you know, with the intent on every, you know, what you make and bring to the world being nutritious. So, like, what what happened, what transpired in your life, what experiences did you go through, endure, or happen upon that brought you to the realization, you know what, I want to bring healthy, delicious food to the world? Well, you know, I wish that was a real simple answer. (laughs) Many different factors with that, you know, some of it was choice, some of it Uh was like, do or die, you know, so I, I think for me, and I always tell this kind of story, like, when I started shifting, I had been working in restaurants. I started working in restaurants when I was 13. I was illegal for about a one month working under the table, basically. And 14, I was legal. And um, I always tell the story. I was, I was living in the Berkshires and um, I, there was this really busy restaurant. I was like, I want to be in that place because there was nothing else going on. And um, the owner of it was this, this um, he was an owner, but he could also cook. He could kind of do everything. And he was amazing. His personality was amazing. He could make 200 people, each person feel like they were in his living room. And so he was really how he taught us, even at 13, he taught us like adults, like how to engage with people and stuff like that. So what happened was, and I'll be honest, I was a crappy bus boy, to be honest. And then one day (laughs) across the line, I was a shy kid. I was really shy. I wouldn't even look people in the eye. And this guy, there was a moment where he kind of almost broke me and I had to do or die. Am I going to move forward? Am I going to do this? And I went for it, got really good at it. And I loved it. And what I loved the most was the energy of the restaurant. I loved Mm -hmm. The dynamics, the people, the, the stories, and each group mm-hmm, was different mm-hmm. and certain personalities coming through. And I think that's what I got hooked on. And then, I, you know, I did this thing through high school where I was working there, got out and, um, you know, got into my career of cooking. And you know, that's a whole other story. But the idea behind that was just like, honestly, I went into cooking. I was like, I'll do it for a year so I know how to do it. And then I can own a restaurant. Oh. And then that never happened. I started watching my my mentors' lives fall apart, relationships fall apart. And I was like, you know, and as I explored, I went into catering. I had this one mentor, a chef, Japanese guy that was like, dude, work a year at a place maximum. Don't take management positions and move on. Get as much experience as you can. And that's what I did up through my late 20s. Um, and then I took a gig at a um, like a high-end wedding place, basically, mm-hmm. destination wedding place. Had an end to it. Was running that for the summer. And I loved it. And right around that time, it was like I was heading in. We're going to date myself right now. And, you know, I'm not date myself, but you know what I mean? And uh, I was heading up to 30. I was hitting up to be 30. And right around that time, I'll never forget one of the um, one of the guys, his, his girlfriend, he was a chef. He happened to be there doing something. And he walked into the kitchen. He's like, hey, man, have you seen that article by Anthony, this guy in The New Yorker? And I was like, what is it? And he gave me a copy. It was Anthony Bourdain's article that actually catapulted him to Kitchen Confidential. And I remember at that point, honestly, I had been screwing, I had been writing a lot and I'd been in Europe working and I started really reflecting on like what food meant to me. And honestly, I wanted to write this story of like, tell the real deal. And he jumped to it. And I remember my writer and he's like, dude, we have this idea. We should have jumped on it. Then he had that book. And honestly, I could relate to that book. And that's what it mm-hmm. was. You know, I had lived that existence for the most yes. part. Some yes. little debauchery, a little craziness, a little hedonism. A little <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of everything out of it. Um, but I was hitting that 30 and it was funny. I had my roommate at the time was another chef. There were three of us that were all chefs and he was having the same, we were, we were calling it our midlife cooking crisis. I love uh, that. What do we do? And Mm -hmm. he, we come from like Maui. He ended up becoming like a uh, chemical engineer. That's what he is now to this day. And so I ended up just taking a break. I took a break from cooking. Yeah. Um, my father moved to the Berkshires. I come from like 12 generations of carpenters in Long Island. A lot of the old houses were built. That's where the rock comes from. Yeah. And, uh, 
So he's like, hey, do you want to learn how to build a house? And I was like, well, I got food down. If I get shelter down, cool. I got <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, uh, I got my food. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did. And in that time period is when I started using food differently. And so for me, honestly, where food became healthy for me, someone asked me, they said, when did you realize food was medicine? Someone asked mm. me and I said, one of the first times I was hungover, probably. I don't know. You know what I mean? And working in kitchens. Mm -hmm. And so what was happening what, throughout the years when I was working in those kitchens, I'd be doing fine dining. And you kind of eat the opposite. And you know, I was running this turn and burn lifestyle. But all of a sudden, I started really having an interest in, again, heavy French food. I was mm -hmm. eating vegetarian on the side. I really mm -hmm. got into curries, miso soups, things like that. Because honestly, I felt like it, I could feel it replenish me after yes. a long week of work. Yes. And it was opposite of what I was cooking. It made me feel different. You know, mm -hmm. so just as something can bring you down, this would bring me up. Mm -hmm. And which was really funny because when I look at it now, you fast forward 20 something years to when I went to Kripalu and most of that food that I was experimenting on the side with became what I was cooking mainstay at Kripalu Center, you know, and, and kind mm -hmm. of creating and basing it off of. So that's what I did, you know, and I, so I, I took that time off and um, wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I focused on eating healthy. I really got mm. into nutrition, more of like mm. the science of it a little bit. Um, was working out with a friend of mine who was a semi-pro boxer, getting the training in. And then the house was almost done. And I hit my hammer, hit my thumb with a hammer, the classic cartoon. And then I fell <laughs> off the roof. That's the, Once you fall off the roof, you know, all right, am I staying in this game or right. not? Right. Right. Roll off the deck. And at that point, I was like, this is ending. And, uh, you know, my father's like, what are you going to do? And he's like, you know, you're pretty, you're, he was like, I really hope you're a great cook because, or at least hope you're better than you are as a carpenter. And I was like, thanks, dad. I appreciate that. But, um, you know, time period, him and I got to hang out together. So that's what I did. After that, I was like, you know what? I had this epiphany one day. What is the one cuisine you haven't done? Healthy. And honestly, mm. I've been studying a lot of Buddhism and yoga yes. throughout this process. Um, there was a quest for spirituality. I was doing a dabbling in yoga, meditation, living in the Berkshires, there were two of the major places, Canyon Ranch and Kripalu were right there. Yeah. And, um, I applied to both as entry level. I wanted Kripalu first because it yeah. had the spiritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And they turned me down. They were like, you're overqualified. I was like, what the heck? I ah! went ahead and tuned into the flow of the world and knowing that's hilarious. You're overqualified. Yeah. I was angry about it. And then, so yeah. I went to Canyon Ranch and they tried to get me to be a manager. But what I had done is I'd, I'd been running this property for so long that I lost touch with what I loved, and that was the food. And slowly through this process, once I, you know, so I ended up at Canyon Ranch as a line cook. And I was like, cool, this is awesome. I, it was beginner's mind. You know what I mean? Like, in, in, you talk about Buddhism. I was dealing with a lot of, like, you know, I had some substance issues that I was dealing with. I was diving into, like, meditation, really looking mm -hmm. at my relationship with food and stuff like that. And that was one of the big things was right service, right work in Buddhism talks about yes. what's your work. And so if I'm in a kitchen that's cranking out crappy food for people that's not benefiting them, what am I doing for this world at this point? Thank you. Know? you. So for me, going into that work was an act of service mm -hmm. to a spirit. Of course, I was being compensated for that service. But at the of same course. time, it was a level for me where I was, um, I was humbling myself. Right. I was humbling. And it was humbling. I got back in the kitchen. You know, I'm like, hey, I ran kitchens. What am I doing? And no, I was at ground level again. And um, right around that time, we found out we were going to have my, my son. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to make money now. This whole soul journey's over. And uh, <laughs> I, I mean, cash. And, you know, in my world, that's why I went into healthy. At this point, my work life got better. I was getting out at nine o'clock at night on a yeah. late night, you know. And then um, a, a girl came up to me one day, one of the other. They worked in this mysterious kitchen on the other end of the building, which all demo kitchens are on the other end of the building. I don't know why. And this woman was like, hey, do you want a demo? And I'm like, demo what? She's like, the kitchen. I'm like, you destroy it? She goes, no, you come and teach. And I said, do you think I'd be good? She goes, yeah, you like to talk. You'll be fine. She goes, I said, is it more money? She said, yes, it's commission. I'm like, I'm in. And so that began my journey. I started teaching. Um, it, 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 and I tell people to this day, you love something, you want to learn more about it, or you've fallen out of love with something, start teaching it. Because yeah. it'll really your love for it immediately and that's what happened to me with my cooking is it invited me to think about what things i was doing why i was doing them having to relate them to people but more importantly it brought me back out to people i had spent yeah. the last I, up until that up until high school when i went back in the kitchen i hadn't been around people i had been catering where i was waitering mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know and i always loved that catering because to me i, I slowly as this stuff kind of peels out i realized it's about the food yes but really, what's the food do? The food holds an experience. Mm -hmm. And so I look back on my work career and I thought, 
Oh my gosh, that's what I've always loved is the food yeah. is the vehicle. It's the medium to get to someone, to nourish them, to make them yes. happy, to serve them. And this can come up in different ways. It could be a wedding, supporting someone at their wedding, a graduation party, or even more so, some of the most impactful ones I've done were funerals. I've had to cater funerals. Right. And there's a certain amount of what is food, what is food mm-hmm. serving as and who am I serving as at that point? So, you know, my personality has always been people. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of this way I realized like, oh, okay, cool. I used to be able to serve people from behind the food that I love, but now I can actually serve them the food with us with this as well, right. with laughter, with caring, with contact. And um, so that's why I began at Katie Rich was just teaching. And, and so there it was different. You know, I was teaching people that had medical issues, you know, that had gone through, yep. gone through the like, you got to do this, this, and this. And by the time yeah. they got to me, they'd be like this. And so that's when I realized, you know, like I was going through a period where there where I was, I was definitely in my body's my temple mode. Uh huh. You know? Uh huh. Uh huh. Definitely, I was going through that health craze where I was like, right. everything is pure, and and it was cool. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know that phase when you first get into healthy food because yeah. it's mind blowing when you start seeing the changes in your body. Yes. You start seeing control. You start seeing these little how you're experimenting with it and it's changing and stuff like that. And that's where the empowerment tends to come from. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what I tell people. Like, you know, for me, I've been in now wellness for 17 years. Right. And it's like, all I've been doing is experimenting with food over that time. Diets mm-hmm. on myself. Like there's no mm-hmm. one size. It's also, exactly. that's pretty much what dragged me into it. It was, it was a matter of halfway through, it was a lifestyle change for myself. Mm-hmm. It was a matter of like what, you know, and, and inevitably I basically, I kind of went into one of my strengths you know, um, which, mm-hmm. which was being in front of people. And mm-hmm. that's where it switched out for me because there I was working with nutritionists, Ayurvedic practitioners. So I would get this kind of information, osmosis, and then I utilized the staff. I took every program you could think of. If I was in the gym, I talked to the vegan bodybuilder. I mm-hmm. talked to the, you know, the female triathlete. What you, what do you recommend? And so there were all these people around me that were experts in their field. So I just basically soaked it all up because that's the thing, you know, I'm focusing on food. I'm a wellness person focused on mm-hmm. food. And I think you could kind of speak to this too, but it isn't all about food. Right. You know, and that's where I'm at mm-hmm. in my career now as I'm kind of stepping out, you know, yes, it's food, but it's also for me, there's food, there's movement, and then there's meditation and, you know, and community. And those three things for me are the big things on a personal mm-hmm. level is food, mm-hmm. movement, and meditation. Mm-hmm. Those three things I'm taking care of on myself, then that breeds community, family, and creates better relationships, et cetera. But for me, those, are those, three, those are those three things. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we focus so much on food that mm-hmm. we forget everything else. Right. And then, um, and the movement can also be categorized as how it is that you are moving throughout your every day and all that that you are intentionally um, participating in. It's not just about like yoga or work or physical fitness. It's all about like, like, where are you choosing to place your physical body? Like what situations? Who who are you? Who are you choosing to interact with? I mean, it's like physical movement is is, is a broad gamut. Exactly. And I think, you know, once you're in that focus of like, you know, once you start looking at your food, you start being aware of how your food affects you, things like that. It's meditation breeds awareness. And then all of a sudden you start becoming aware of like, you know, I do this all the time now. Like, you know, I go into it, I try a job out and I go in and I go, how do I feel when I leave? You know, how does my body feel? How does my body feel? And that's what what's come for me through this process of really tuning into what works for me with food is it's an awareness on everything in my life, so to speak. And my aces, by far, no way. You know what I mean? There's blind spots all over, but you find yourself being aware of like the after effects of things and 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 like really tuning into what it is. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we just kind of move and we're not thinking. You know, we do it with food. We do it with everything. Well, I mean, most recently, most recently and um, periodically, I'll realize like, wow, like how unconsciously I have been moving throughout my day, like how autopilot, you know, that you that you can become. And, you know, it there there's so much to unpack there, Jeremy, you know, from the very first thing that you mentioned about like, you know, loving food like when you were a kid you know and being a part of 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 preparing and making food like there's a lot of parallel in our lives yeah um when it comes to that like where i was inspired by my grandmother and loved to make make food all my life and then you know i started the health and wellness journey in my early 20s and you know one of the things that i love that you said was like when you realized I, i hear an echo yeah where is that coming from um, it sounds like it's it's through here. 
It might yeah, be on. on your phone. Hold on. Um, hold on one second. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. It's weird. I don't know why it's doing it. Like I think I'm on something. I'm not hearing I'm not hearing it now. How's it now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. I just dropped it. Sorry, Instagram people. <laughs> This is hilarious. Hey, y'all, this is live. I'm a chef, not a tech guy, you know? This is this is real freaking life here. Um, exactly. You're but, yeah, like, it's like so much there. You know, when you talked about, um, you, when you started, because, like, we, we have these, these, um, these journeys, these, these, these moments that we're supposed to, we're all here on a different path, different journey, but the awareness <laughs> that you were having as you, you know, you feel like, oh, I've done this, this, and this, I should be doing this now. I should be here at this level. But then all of a sudden you're brought back down when Capralo said that you were overqualified and then you, you went back to doing something that you had been doing. You're like, oh, I should be past this. But there was a reason that, that, that all is building you, um, building you to where you, are at this moment and and the gifts that you're bringing to the world like you know six years ago when i started defo rick and licious with my iphone in my kitchen i mean i was i was ready I, i'm ready for the food network but there's been all this that i've created that's a trail you know that that is a trail and you know when you talked about when you realized that food was medicine like that's one of the biggest you know and and how you were now feeling and, and mental clarity, I'm sure, was even more apparent in your life yeah. when you started to eat cleaner, when you started to realize that the more you fueled your body with, 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 with healthier choices, you know, the more, uh, the more intentional and more clarity you were able to focus on where you're supposed to be. Completely. And, you know, one of the things I have to say for me, you know, having been a chef is I will say this, even though I wasn't intentionally eating healthy for most of my career, the food I was eating wasn't necessarily unhealthy. And I, you know what, and what I mean by that is mm -hmm. I feel blessed that I was always working in a restaurant and the quality of the restaurants. I was never working in a restaurant where we were pre buying things and dropping them in the fryers. It was, exactly. We were doing, you know, we just weren't tuned into the organic. Real food. We weren't tuned in. So at least it was clean food. And I realized, you know, when I made my switch to get healthy, I realized how lucky I was to have that skill set because that's the skill set where most people are having the, tr the struggle to make the move, to make the transition is mm -hmm. you're picking mm -hmm. up that cooking skill because most of us just don't have those cooking skills. Right. You know what I right. mean? Mm -hmm. um, so it's again, I, you know, I always kind of stray to that. It's like, you know, I go back to diets and stuff like that. And I always try to like peel out of like, is there unhealthy, healthy? And for me, a big piece was like, I was kind of there with food, but it really was about bringing exercise into the mode because dude, yeah. let's be honest. I work nights in kitchens in major cities. You get out at midnight there's only a few places open that late and their names Pizza. are three letters, three <laughs> letters, and it ain't gym. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's bar and it's all. Yeah. And so when you think about that, you know, even in a lifestyle, mm -hmm. I would tell people like, look at my lifestyle. I'm like, I, yeah, I live in Chicago, but look at the hours that I operate. Mm -hmm. I'm working. I'm getting out at midnight. What's going on in most cities at midnight. It's not like the Brighton unicorns you're seeing like, the seedier sides. You see, so it's not just about the lifestyle of of the food I was eating, but it was that lifestyle in a sense of like, where am I putting my space? Where am I being? You know what I mean? And I live yeah. this kind of dark side place yeah. behind the scenes, not doing anything. And mm -hmm. I got to be honest, and straight shot. I when you said this before about humbling and kind of dropping down, I think that was the biggest lesson that I've gotten from anyone like right now I'm in a transition as well because I kind of stepped yeah. we want to be clear I've stepped out of the executive chef role I'm in this kind of ambassador teaching role and someone asked me about it recently they were like dude like isn't that scary and da, da, da. well I said look 17 years ago <laughs> I made a major move and I took a ground and entry level position and that's what I looked for specifically and you know what I had the biggest growth in my career after doing that. So again, yeah. I think it's not for me, it's not even a lesson of food. And when I talk, tell people about my story, it's like, no, this whole idea of that everything's always this upwards. No. Oh God, no. Gonna, it's it's like you go up, get that beginner's mind and drop back down again. Because guess <laughs> what? You're gonna build that momentum that much. Stronger. Yes. Yes. You know I mean? It's like but, yeah. It's like because when you're biking. If, yeah. if you're biking up a hill all the time, you're just gonna wear out. But if you're up 
and you humble yourself, Ooh. you coast once in a while, and yeah, boom, yeah. you get that speed yeah. to get up that other hill. And so I guess that's for me is, you know, it, 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 it just in my journey with food and it's the same thing, you know, you can be eating healthy, you go on vacation, you drop off for a day. Exactly. You know what? That could perfect. be a moment where you're like, when I first was in my body is my temple thing where I would beat myself <laughs> up to death. Yeah. Or I would be like, yeah. cool. I lived, yeah. I was on the road. I had to do what I did in that moment. I recognize how it makes me feel and God, it makes me so much more grateful for how I eat. And I can't wait to get home. Absolutely. Home and, and walk away feeling that way. Yeah, and riding that wave of life, that's every aspect of life is is a wave. It's a peak in a valley, a peak in a valley. And again, there's so much, because if you're not learning, if there's nothing else to learn, if you're already at the top of your game and you're just, and, and, I mean, and there's nothing else. Okay, you can be at the top of your game. That was the wrong thing to say. But like when you're up here, there's still more to learn that brings you even higher the next time, even higher, bringing more value to you and to others. And it's like, so it, because if you're, if there's, nothing else to learn you're dead right if there's exactly. nothing more to gain no more value to that you can bring to yourself then you know exactly, um, exactly. so like that's become my mantra you know i realized through the pandemic you know when, mm. when we were at Kapala, obviously we shut down and you know there's yeah. self-preservation of like hey let's i switched all my programming to online and that was interesting because i was getting a couple hundred people a shot and what was weird is the teaching changed for me because you're talking to a screen. So you don't mm -hmm. get yes. the chemical feedback because right. as a teacher, you get the gratification of that. But what was more and more interesting was that I realized that food for me was just the medium at that point. Yeah, that it was exactly. All about the vehicle. People. When I had, when I had yes. 180 people on that screen and I could see them all and realize to me, I saw them all as family from Kripalu, but half of them didn't even know each other. But for yeah. me, I'm looking at him. I'm like, this is my family. These are the people that I know. And you know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. so that's, that's become my thing ever since the pandemic is my mantra now is that like, what are your work goals? What I'm like, get in front and get in front and teach as many people as possible in as many different places. And that's my goal right now. That's all I'm going on. So it's in whatever comes, that's what comes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm just, and like, just like you, like the flow, I'm all about the flow mm -hmm. right now. And you kind of came mm -hmm. up with my across my way and i'm like oh i don't you know it's a three hour let nope i need to go meet this person you yes know, there. and so that's yes. kind of where i'm at right now just in that teaching. yeah and you know and like the more that you have been able to do for yourself and all that you've learned and all you've gained throughout your the entirety of your life do you agree that that that's part of that passion of wanting to spread that to others and you know i'll tell you the pandemic was a gift in that aspect of being able to reach more through this this screen this is how where you know empowered conversations was born through the pandemic or during the pandemic and you know my my passion for wanting to you know to inspire others to see the value of you know i've got three things of not only just fueling your body you know being mindful of how you're fueling your body but what what you're doing with your life living your best life you know living a life that you're thriving. I, I remember you saying something one of the first times we talked about thriving, like life is not just about just existing and getting by. It's like, it's about right. thriving and, right. and, and experiencing and living, you know, living fulfilled. And one of the ways in which I find fulfillment is being able to spread what I've been able to do for myself, you know, right. through, through being intentional, through, through being intentional and on purpose with how it is I choose to carry out my every day. And it's not, I'm, and I'm certainly not perfect. Perfect. And I'm certainly have my, my moments of despair and anxiety, you know, just the depression, anger, frustration. I mean, me losing my entire Facebook and Instagram, you know, it's been it's been a pure, pure death. But it's like it's like, OK, but I have to feel I have to feel that in order to transition because there's something in that for me. Because the day, Jeremy, that you and I spoke for the first time when I was about to lift off the elliptical and you were backing up, you know, up the hill you know, walking, <laughs> was was the day day that I woke up and at my, I had been hacked and I had lost everything. Oh, and yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, it was the day. Yeah, Cause I remember even telling you about, it, I was like, yeah, like I, I can't get in my Facebook account. I've, apparently I've been hacked and somebody was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. sexually yeah, explicit was material, you know, on my, on my page, but I'll get it back, you know, and didn't realize what a difficult process that is, you know, yeah, but yeah. it's like, it's like, but there's gift in that there. And, and right before, and I'm sure you will agree to this, especially, you know, it's spiritually speaking, right before something magnanimously wonderful, what we would consider in the realm of good and wonderful 
it's like something magnanimously also equally in the negative direction. And I'm not going to use the word bad, even though I just use the word bad, but in the negative, in the different opposite direction must, must go away to then create that space. It's very true. Like, well, they, they, well they listen over the last, especially over the last 12 years, like I can just speak to the duality of yes. existence. I mean, that's <laughs> all of the great moments that I had, you know, whether it be yeah. chops, there was Yo! something we just as nasty that, yeah. going on underneath when the book oh, released, yeah. I had something going like everything that I've ever done that I've been in the last 10 years. What I've learned the most is don't expect it to be all like, <laughs> and we all know this, but it's like, the idea is, all right, we're going to release the Carpalo Kitchen Cookbook, and this is just going to be glory, and I'm going to be riding this. But I'm like, no, life goes on. There's still the underlying crap, and oh God, we're doing this, and we got to ah, I got pulled over for speeding, and I got to debate this ticket. Like, there's a duality, and I got to yes. word with my life. Sometimes, the greater the thing that's happening, the greater the opposite thing is that comes to like oh, throw me for that. Yes. yes. And it just kind of throws me for that loop. And it's into that breathing into it, I think, you know, at a certain point, you know, but I think, like you said, I think that's, it's the, um, that's what I picked up for me. And I think that was why I was drawn to Kripalu Mm -hmm. more. So, I mean, Candy Ranch is an amazing place, very much Western based nutrition, Ah. calories, fat, fiber, kind of like a training wheel, whereas Kripalu dove more into the individual and the spirituality. And those were the tools that I picked up more than Mm -hmm. anything over there was Mm -hmm. this kind of observation. And I gotta be honest, like at the same time, I was a young parent. And a young parent, a, a new parent, I was like, man, this is the ultimate form of spirit. Here I was for a few years before doing all my meditations in the morning. And all of a sudden I got two kids and I'm like, oh, let's talk about impermanence. Ah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Constant life. So, you know, I think that's in the process. It's like learning that, that like, yeah, everything is always going to be good and bad at the right. same time. Right, yin and yang, yin and yang. It always is. And if it's not, something's out of balance. <laughs> you know, I, um, I published my first cookbook this year, back in January. The very next day, I got COVID. Um, the year before I had, and and what he's saying guys is like, you know, and and what, you know, when I brought up, but like, it's like the yin and the yang, the dark and and the light, you know, um, a year ago I flew to New York to be on chef Clemenza Caserta's Sunday dinner with Clemenza. And, and then I had this amazing experience. I went into New York city, visited with a girl from one of my best friends in the world, love her to death, Tina Heidelman Strandberg. Anyway, I got back and I was sick, like, like really, really, really sick two days later. And it's, and what I notice is that like, um, whenever I'm doing something major, you know, because there's a yeah. lot of building, there was a lot of building here. It is deep, far, Beautiful and delicious, I saw in person. healthy awesome. is delicious. And when, when I published that, you know, that was like, a, cause it had been building for years and finally right. it's like, boom. And then it released it to the world. And all of a sudden it's like, then your body, your body, it's like our bodies are intuitive and they know what we need. Okay. It's now it's time for Stephanie to rest. So I'm going right. to, in order to, for, for Stephanie to rest, because as you can tell, Jeremy and I have a lot of energy. It's like, okay, I'm, I've got, <laughs> I've got, a, I've got an annihilator. I've got to make her sick. So I physically get yeah. sick and I'm on the couch, you know, and, and, and you and I talked about this. Like when we met, like last week, when I, you know, when we had that dinner, when I made that amazing dinner and it's like, and then I, when I took you back to the, to the, um, to the plane and I come back and all of a sudden it was like, okay, I'm starting to crash. I'm starting to crash physically my body because our bodies can't just be in this heightened, you know, like, you know, sore. it's, it's. But I think for you and I remember, um, and I'm ADD because I, I, I like have a what? thought. I'm like, oh, I'll jump to another thought. Get out but of here. <laughs> one of my girlfriends told me this was years ago because I was sick. And um, and she was like, you know what, Stephanie? You are so, yeah, all the time that when you get sick, it's like you're like, oh, uh, you know. Yeah. And it, it's like our bodies, it's like it, it to, in order for us to slow down and, 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 build because you can't pour from an empty cup so in those times of being in in rest and i remember you you know i was the next three days after our dinner last week i was like just like you know and you would think oh we'd just be riding this high but no it was like no it's rest time and it's like experiencing you know emotion anxiety like an anger and i'm like why am i angry god i just did the most amazing thing with this amazing person right 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 you know right. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. yeah i know 
That's, I mean, that's, that's always, you know, I, like I said, everything I can pinpoint in the last five years, every major accomplishment that you see on my resume or written yeah. somewhere, there was something negative going on in the background. Yes. And that's that existed. And it's just the acceptance of that. You know, there was this, mm-hmm. there was a period where I'm like, why can't it all be this? Or, you know, why can't it all, why can't I just enjoy this? Yeah. It's my oh. choice. It's my choice to play that game. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what it is. And, and I guess that's, you know, I was talking about that. It's interesting because my kids are in the teens, you know, heading into their teens. And these are the conversations we're having is now I'm kind of pouring this information to them of like, Oh, Hey, by the way, <laughs> like you don't have to decide what you want to do in life. Like really follow your interests at this point, you know, yeah, things like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, what I like about what you did with the book, when you show me the book, and I think what impressed me about you is this whole, and this is something that I'm working through. And as a chef, it's tough. It's, not waiting for the perfect time. Oh, not waiting for the perfect. Time. We do it all the time with with food, with exercise, um, with books or projects. Is is we lay out the we we more get into talking about it, or mm-hmm. you know, so either we talk about getting to the end point and don't think about in between, right? Mm-hmm. Or you know what I mean? Or we're just kind of like ignoring what the situation is at a certain point, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. that's the piece is like you you went in, nothing was perfect, and you jumped. Right. And I was explaining that to my daughter along the way. I'm like, you know, with food or anything, a health thing, because, you know, she's trying to get on this health thing. And she's like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. And I can do this. And I said, but think about it, Jazz. What you've done is you've created a rigid line that you now have to hold yourself to. I said, yeah. so rather than, I would do this with meditation. I remember when I forgot to Carpala, it was like, you know, how do you meditate? And I'm like, I should be in a loincloth on the mountain. <laughs> alone, yeah, I'm a true meditator. And I was like, dude, right. how about you just start with like a mindful minute? You know what I mean? And like, and and that's what we often do in our lives is whether we're in taking on a cooking practice or a project or something, mm-hmm. what we do is either we're waiting for it to be perfect so we don't do anything, right? Or we don't make it approachable. And what we do is we strive, we try to meet the practice where it is rather than having the practice meet us. If it's up here, I used to do it with cooking when I first started. I always wanted to be the top chef when I was like 19. So I would go after it and I'd just be like, fail, fail, <laughs> fail. And then one day I was like, how about you just learn how to like saute some carrots? You know, yeah. oh, oh, and there's a win. What's the next one? Let's steam some carrots. There's a win. And that's what I realized when I got into Kripalu, meditation. That's mm-hmm. where it hit me. It was like, mm-hmm. I don't meet the practice. The practice meets me. Yes. And then that's where the subtle shifts begin to happen. And mm-hmm. what's nice about doing that, you know, I was telling my daughter, I said, don't commit to like, oh, I'm going to do 20 minutes of this, do 20 minutes of that, do 20 minutes of this. I'm like, how about you do this? I'm going to walk this afternoon. Yeah. Or I'm just going to, you know what? I'm going to look for any way to move. And I said, and those little, those little things become habits. Yeah. Then, then you've worked it into your system and you're not trying to overreach. So again, food is a metaphor. When I teach cooking, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's beyond just food on the table. Yes. You know I mean? It's it's the idea of like, you know, what you bring into the practice. You know, if you mm-hmm. walk into yoga class and you're just like, it's gonna suck. I'm not gonna be able to do this. What's this person doing? Guess what? That's probably you're bringing that energy out of that practice. Exactly. So right. my thing is like just get in there and do it. Yeah, don't be yeah. attached to it. And that's why right. I joke half the time when I'm teaching is because I don't want people walking in with this whole, because people do with food. It's like, it's got to be perfection. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, right. to be honest, worst case scenario is it'll suck when you're done. Worst case scenario, right? You'll like yeah. order out, like whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I guess that's, you know, for me is now as I get older with the teaching is, is yeah, food is my modality, but it's also beyond that at a certain mm-hmm. point. And that happened to me over the pandemic. Like I finally, I hit a reset with myself in 2019. So the pandemic hit um, and then I started getting calls. People were like, dude, you look better than before the pandemic. What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you do? And all of a sudden I was getting calls on the salary and they're like, dude, you, cause I lost like 30 something pounds in it. And I was healthy, but I just, I, I found something. There was mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. I hit. I was, I reset my body is what yeah. I did. Yeah. I hit 50 and now all of a sudden I don't, I don't need to eat half as much food. And honestly it was through experimentation, but yeah, for me, I realized that's the piece that I have to keep being out there for. Because again, and I was telling you this the other day, like you don't know what you have to offer people out there. I don't care. Anybody that's listening, if you're mm-hmm. sitting there going, oh, I think I could do this and offer this. If it's right living and it's helping someone else by not doing it, you're only doing a disservice to that person that needs your stuff out there. Yes. you know, And that's how someone worded it with me is like, you have to make those steps. And like, so, you know, I'm always... 
attached to different organizations. I started branching out and doing stuff. I'm like, I'm going to teach them online classes. I'll throw some soup classes. About, and it's great. It feels good. Now I'm building this community. And you know what? I had someone the other night, you know, I'm doing them for free just because I want, you know, I'm like donation. Right. Free. I right. just want to get through the right. process. And I had a woman at the end the other day and she's just like, look, I, she's like, I just have so much fun hanging out. And you know what? That was enough for me to keep doing it. You know, at that absolutely, point. absolutely. Me, all I did was making a soup the other night, but that because person, of why? Because right. why you're doing it? Yeah, you go know. ahead. So for me, it's just making a soup for them. It's beyond that, you know. Right. And so right. you don't, you don't know the input. I had I, again not to share weird, but like, yeah, you know, it's so free. She's, she's on retirement income. I have people that are limited incomes. I'm like, free, take it, and it's energy, yes, and it's there. Yes. And so like me is like, what you have is a gift. Share it by waiting for the perfect time or to wait till you're ultimately yes. secure to share it. You can't. And that's the thing is like, it's all about baby steps. Okay. And baby yeah. steps is just a metaphor for that, for that small intentional action, because, you know, like, you know, my, my nephews are like 19 and 21. And I'm sure you know this with your children. It's just about getting them to have that, that, that awareness, that mindset of starting something. Because the earlier that you do start, the earlier that you do start making intentional decisions and being at least aware of, of, of like thinking about what you want to do, you know, and it's going to change when you're 18 versus right, when you're right. 50. You know, it's just, and, and, when, and earlier when you said about like, so I think a lot of people don't take the action or don't jump in. What's up, John Corbellini? That's who I was waving at. My friend John Corbellini oh, okay. here. And um, he says, hi, Stephanie. Hi, Jeremy. And it's it's about like the, the, the fear of failure or there's also, I've learned the fear of success because it's like you mentioned, you mentioned to one, your mm -hmm. daughter um, about like, oh, I'm doing this and this and this and this and this. And you, it's, you're creating a rigidity. So, and there's, so, like, okay, so I was successful with the cookbook, but there's also, it's like, there's, there's, there's this continuous reach. There's this continuous, okay, what's next? What's next? And think about like a lot of people um, and myself included at times, it's like, okay, if I do this, then that's the level that people expect, you know, right. and, but, right. and, but not putting yourself or anyone else on that pedestal and realize that we're all here, you know, we're all have these, you know, we all want the same things that, you know, the, the, the elated excitement, the happiness, the joy, the fulfillment, the love. And what Jeremy said earlier, just take the action. If you're, if there's something pounding from your heart, food and, and uh, has been a pounding from my heart since I was a child, health and wellness and this intentional living and then this spiritual way of, of operating my life has, is a heart pounding, you know, and it's just, it's about taking that consistent action. And like, for instance, as like a worthiness and life coach, you know, when I'm working with a client, it's not about going from zero to 60, although yeah, it'd be great for it to go from zero to 60, but that's right, not how right. life works. It's about starting with those baby steps. And, you know, for instance, um, I have this right now, it's fall into healthy habits. And it's, it's not a long laundry list of stuff to do every single day. It's like one small thing to be intentional about whether it's squeezing lemon in your water or putting su a powder super, right. super greens in your water or writing five things you're grateful for. You know, so many people are in that space of, I, I have nothing to be grateful for. Well, I, you know, the fact that you're breathing, you know, and when you put yourself in that awareness or in that heightened, um, have you ever heard of the hierarchy of emotions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you know where where the bottom is like the shame, and the the top is like the blissful euphoric state of being. And when you go from shame to anger, you've lifted. So maybe right, one day right. you realize, okay, you're right. I, I'm breathing, so I'm all right. I'm grateful that I'm breathing today. Well, then tomorrow, all of a sudden, the awareness of breathing isn't even. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm breathing. And then today, I'm grateful because because you know my lights are on, or and you just and you just build upon, and then all of a sudden, you've got ten things you're writing that you're grateful for, and right. and. and it's just about like when you feel something, you know, fervently from your heart, don't worry about failing because you probably will fail. Like he said, you know, when you come to make right. the soup, maybe, it, maybe it's a disaster, but whatever. The next time it ain't a disaster, does that next time it's defa rickin' licious. Rick licious. Exactly. Exactly. You know, just start. It's the action in the process is where all the gold is, no matter yeah. what. And it's even, even within the cooking, you know, some people tell me about cooking and well, it's, it's effort. You know, there's effort yeah. and outcome ROI. I think sometimes we get hung up on ROI and like Return what on that, that means. Yep. And right. so like, I've been talking a lot about 
food in general because we're marketed in our culture. Everything's got to be fast, 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 fast. Yeah. And I've been really taking a look around at like, I don't know, living and in think New of England, why, Jeremy, I don't mean to cut you off, but think of why, because there's this, there's this, um, like, there's not enough time. Exactly. Scarce. Well, it all comes from scarcity, really. And it's scarcity it mindset. Scarcity the of time. Of scarcity. Right. Exactly. And so that, you know, that's for me is like, you look at, I've been living in New England. I look at a lot of the old, I've been noticing a lot of old architecture lately and like the mm-hmm. work that would go into this architecture. And some of it, I'm like, knowing the tools they had, I'm like, my God, that would have taken a year to do. Like, and in my mind yeah. and in my modern mind, I'm like, why the hell would you do that? You know what I mean? But here I am a hundred years later, 200 years later, looking at the beauty of this and recognizing this. So I'm like, how do I start bending time again? We, I just did a thing in August. I did a foraging and, um, cooking kit program at Carpalo outside with Michael Martelli's a school mindful school of outdoor yeah. leadership. And that's what we were talking about being outside. We were able to bend time where like all of a sudden you, you're not in that rush. And I was watching, I was watching these women in India making like non, and it was this process mm-hmm. and it was just community mm-hmm. and they were spend hours making mm-hmm. this. It was like a three day process, mm-hmm. but they're, they're, in that space they're in yeah. that bending of time and, and and they're in it and they're just enjoying the action of doing it yes. community going on so that's what i was trying to tell people lately is like look at your projects not just for the outcome or the return on the investment but what they can do with your time and like can it slow time for you and in, in a sense of that you're so present that you're mm-hmm. just into this for the action of doing it and you're not even you're not even like attached to the results it's like whatever happens happens right just, i'm into just doing this in this moment because know? it because it means something to me to be doing it exactly exactly they're one of the best mantras i, I forget the book i was reading it right before the pandemic and it, I, I can't remember the book it was the new york times one but he had a mantra at the end and you know you know the mantra you know may i be well may i be happy you know, maybe safe. Mm-hmm. And I've always like that mantra is good and I like it. And I play with a lot of different mantras, but this one was like one of the best ones for me. And, I, mm-hmm. and it, it, it always nailed me. And it was this, may my, may my mind be empty. May my heart be full and may my body be busy. And that hit me on a different level because my personality, if you tell me those, and I can think about those times when I'm in, when I'm in that space, mm-hmm. That's when I'm at my best, you know? Mm-hmm. And so for me, like, it was like, I've been meditating for 15, 20 years. It took me up until 2019 to find a mantra that worked for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I found uh, it, I found it. I was like, ooh, this works for me. So again, it was the process of finding that, you know? And yeah. like, so like, you know, talking about food, you know, I talk about my food journey, but like my meditation journey is kind of the same. I remember 2015, I was like, I'm going to commit to once a day. I want to get a year once a day. And about eight months in, I was like doing the whole like, what the hell am I doing? You know, like you start losing track and you lose track. And mm-hmm. then I had an epiphany and then I made it through and then I made it that year. And dude, it yeah. was great. It felt great. But then all of a sudden it shifted and it became more about getting that day in there than the actual act of meditating. So guess what right. I had to do? I had to make myself skip a day so that I went back to zero. Right, because, because that can become it, autopilot. Right, exactly. So same with food, just like and, with me with food. I yeah. love food. I got into it. I became this manager at a certain level, but it, that's how I evolved point in that space. I needed to re-relationship with food, you know? So I dropped out, went back to zero. So again, it's that zeroing out sometimes yeah. is what can bring us back to where we need to be that enables us to feel what it is we desire to feel by having that which we want so in having not and having not what we want you know right. we it, it's a greater appreciation so you right. can look at it that way as well is yeah, that yin and yang of life exactly. is like you know uh, whenever I, you know i'm going through something and i'm like okay why why and it's so painful i mean it's like if somebody's if i'm if i hit my arm with a hammer that's going to hurt the healing process of that is definitely going to be painful it's going to be healed but it's like okay but in that you know it's 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 in that like realizing oh the pain's not there anymore and what you were talking about like i actually went about a week where I, I do this thing in the morning where I sit in my sacred space and I have my, my bone broth, my, my super greens. And then I, you know, most oftentimes I meditate, but there for a week, I wasn't meditating because I was so busy, you know, in my head doing other things. But then when I got that, I was like, whoa, I realized how that starting that day with that, that 10 to 20 minutes of 
meditation, what, what that brought for me. And, and, you know, like you said, like your, your head's empty or your, your mind is empty. And it's not that it's like empty. It's like, it's, it's like, think of, I think of it as there's space there space. For, for that to come to fill your heart right. so that right. your body is in an action, in action, in alignment with what's coming to your heart. Mm -hmm. through that it's space just plastic, like a placid lake it's that placid yeah. lake and we rarely get that space and you know mm. and i relate that even to food you know like when i was talking mm. earlier about how when i first got into healthy food mm. i got oh I'm in the health 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 and then i hit this plateau where it was my body is my temple and then yeah. time i ate something and i looked down on people and, da, 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 and then it yeah. became this judgment yeah. so i had right. to, i had to right. reassess what am i doing and then honestly mm -hmm. when i went into then from there i went to ayurveda and Ayurveda was yeah. more about the individual's constitution. And I'm like, oh, this is a whole new learning thing. So again, it re-relationship myself. Like that Western yes. day got me to the point where I needed to be. But mm -hmm. then it turned into this matter of perfection. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. And then I learned more. So again, I think it's it's that how do we know in, in cooking, you know, we hit walls in our practice where like some people I tell them, you hit a wall at home. I'm like, you come to a workshop with me. I said, I hit a wall. I go work for free in a kitchen just to get some inspiration, yeah. just to get a reset. Even if it's stuff that I don't cook, if it's fried food, I can go watch it. I'll get something out of it. It's just an action Absolutely. to get me out of my, cause we're in that, mm, you get into your train habit really yeah. quick. Yeah. So that new endeavor, you know, yes. that meditation becomes habitual. I, yeah, I could be sitting every day, but what am I doing during that time? I say that we're all am brainwashed and in? hypnotized. We're all right. brainwashed and hypnotized by the way in which we carry out our every day, you know, that autopilot. Right. Right. And like, I love that you say that you have to take yourself out of it to then appreciate being, being in that, which, you know, right. Right. which is purposeful. And, you know, you mentioned chopped and I, I want you to share with me the experience that you yeah. had. Um, and yeah, with, with, when you were on chopped. So Interesting. I mean, I'll give you the, I'll give you the back end spiritual thing of it, you know? So mm. I don't know the shows came out was right when I was started at, Kripal, at Canyon Ranch it was when those shows came out because when Amber was pregnant with Hayden, my son, we would watch Top Chef. And I was like, Oh, this is the first show I've watched. That's when all those cooking shows came out yes. and I would watch them. And there was a dude that I worked with at one of the hotels that was on one of them. And then mm -hmm. a girl I worked with in another hotel. And what was funny is she was great. Well, we worked together 30 years ago. I went and did a private gig slice my hand on a mandolin in front of all these really famous chefs i was coming up and it was really embarrassing and i came back and she made fun of me 20 something years later she did the same thing on national television and i said well <laughs> karma comes back so many years later she's like shut up i don't want to talk about it. but anyway i had this fear i was like i never want to go on one of those shows because of that I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I, people are like, you should go on. I'm like, no. And then I would do the thing. Let's be honest, Stephanie. I would make fun of it. Those shows are stupid. Who wants to do that? Do, 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 do. But anyway, Kripalu, fast forward years later, I start getting asked to go on to it by marketing mm. Kripalu. And I keep, no, 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 I'm too busy. And honestly, I'm making fun of it. And then one day I was honest. I'm like, dude, you're scared. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Right, 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 right. And so 2018, going into 2019, it was like New Year's. I was reading that book. I think it was Stephen Levine or someone. It was the yes experiment where the dude just says oh, yes oh, to everything. Oh, love that. So I read the book and I was like, you know what? This week I'm going to start that. Well, within two days, I get an email from marketing. They're like, hey, do you want to go on Chopped? And I was like, Y-E-S, sent. <laughs> uh, yes. And I, I committed to it. Um, and at the same time, I was in the middle of writing the book at Kripalu. And mm -hmm. so honestly, I tell you, it wasn't even about being about Chopped. It was about getting my arse up there and doing it. In yes. the middle of the chaos, going yes. down to New York, meditating in the middle of Central Park the night before the thing, trying to get my senses on. My only goal, quite honestly, was do not cut yourself right in front of millions of people. That was my only goal. That was yeah. my only goal. Yeah. And then yeah. we got down there. We do this thing. We meet at like six in the morning in a weird place up on like up and up, way uptown, across from like a McDonald's, crazy, yeah. whatever. But we got in there, and I'll tell you what, this is what it was anxiety, 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 all leading up. I got the book going, I got that. The moment we walked into that studio, woof, and I got up there to perform, to compete, it all went away. And in that moment, that was, it was before the competition, it was that moment between standing and the competition starting was worth all of it. At that moment, I did not care if I won, if right. I lost. Right. It was the 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 going from angst, 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 angst to all of a sudden being in the space and it all opening up and going, 
this is awesome. Now we're yes. going to have fun. And all of a sudden wow. it became just, I was just there. And we said, they said, action. And I was like, boom. And within yeah. one minute, they were like, cut. And I was like, what the? This is the only thing I share. And all of a sudden, Ted Allen's like, hold on a second. I need my mat. And he walks back out with a little like gym mat. And he puts it down. So he gives him like an inch on the table. Gives him an inch height on the table. And I was like, man, we cut for that. And then they're like, action. And we went back to it. And it was amazing. It was a great time. I, I will share this. A lot of it you can't share, but a lot of it was, um, you know, you get in there, it's quiet. You, you, the music isn't playing, so you don't know. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blissful time cooking. I did, I did pretty well. I mean, that second round, chicken feet took me down. Um, but for me, there was this one, when we got down there, there was one person that was kind of a jerk and he said something that was off, off colored. And I looked, I was like, all right, my only goal is to not cut myself and beat that guy. And I did beat that guy. I, I won through the first round. Yes. And then the second round, this is what I learned. We were getting through it, and one of the guys needed something. He burned his okra, and I gave him his okra. And that helped him pass his round, but they cut it all out. You know, it's one of those things. But it was cool. And yeah. so what for me, in that moment, they were like, dude, why would you do that? I'm like, because if I'm going to win, it's going to be integrity. Absolutely. Thank you. So, oh, my God. I was a guy from a yoga center. They threw me chicken feet, whatever. But the contestants I had were amazing. The people that were on there were amazing. But one of the things that got me was after the first round, I had a really incredible first round. And – one of the judges was Mark Baker. Who was there. Um, sorry, I keep dropping stuff. You're so he, uh, hilarious. He um he basically uh right after my round, I kind of killed it. He's like, "Hey, come here," and he's like, "Yeah." I go, "What?" And he goes, "Just so you know, this is where it's all going." And I said, "What do you mean?" He goes, "What you're doing for food at Kerpala, that healthy thing, that's where it's all going." And I was like, "Really?" And honestly, be here I was, a yoga center guy on the shot, and first guy ever from a yoga center, which was plain. I kept doing funny things in the back that was throwing him off, but um, that actually made me feel really good in yes. that moment. I was like, you know what? I'm good with wherever this goes at that moment. But Absolutely. the funniest thing was. You know my humor. I got a mouth. You're on a mic all day in there. So the show ends. I get out of there. It's like 12 hours. Even if you're second round, I was out of there in like 12, 14 hours. Get out in the city. Feel great. Get home that night. Lay down. And the first thing in my mind, Stephanie, is this. Oh, my God. What did I say in the back room? Did I make fun of vegans? Did I say something? <laughs> and for the next seven months, I was worried. I'm like, oh, I hope I didn't say anything too silly about you know, anything that's going to show up on that. Oh my God, I do that. I beat myself over. <laughs> what did I, could I have said? Did I, do I offend anybody? Did I piss anybody off? Dude, you know, so did there's I, many layers to these yeah. shows. And it's like, oh, yeah. okay. So the night we're on show, everyone's getting pumped. Everyone from Kripalo. And I'm like half angst of like, what do they cut it to? And it's amazing how much they cut, you know, in those shows. But oh, I can imagine. Me, yeah. It's an experience that I would never, I would never regret because it was, it was, it was a great, good chance for me to be honest. And what exposure, you know, you oh, received. Yeah, yeah. And when you said, well, um, I'm sorry. What was the chef's name again? I'm drawing a blank. That Mark said, Baker. Mark Baker is a restaurant Mark Baker, chef. That you, what you're doing is 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 the future. And you know, that's my big, huge passion with D for Rick and Licious is to bring yeah. to the world the niche of healthy, scrumptiously delicious food. And you know, what my one of my big dreams, my one of my biggest dreams at this present time is to host, you know, cooking shows on the Food Network, all centered around that paradigm right. of healthy, delicious food with my big hawk and goo my big sense of humor and fun and yeah. you and i oh my god you and i co-hosting a show would be double double the for cool, let's do it let's synergistic. Do it. and it's like it's not about me be you know beating bobby flay or be or, or, or winning chopped or being the next iron chef it is about me and my heart my pounding heart felt passion to want to bring my soul through healthy delicious food and impact millions of people around the world because millions of people around the world watch the right. Food Network. Right. And, right. you know, like in, in my in my mind, like there's nothing else but the Food Network and then HGTV, you know, an occasional Netflix show. But, you know, it's just like when somebody tells me they like, I'm like, do you watch Food Network? Like, they're like, no, not really. I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean you don't watch the Food Network? Like, they're like Food Network is life. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> but it's like, place. it's, it, you know, and the fact that you were there and he said that to you and you made an imprint, you were a domino, you, you, you were a domino and, and you planted a seed. You, you planted yeah, a seed and no. it was felt. That presence of you was felt and your purpose was felt. Right. And then, like you said, just the healthy being out in that yeah. environment was a kind of fun thing. So to me, it was, you know, and it, you know, it's funny when I lost about it, you know, it's one of those things, again, I always look, we always have to look for meaning and everything. And honestly, mm. I was really grateful for the loss because it was actually yeah. a really great, I was able to set a really great example for my kids. 
you know, yes, like absolutely. you take a loss like that, you know, right. like I had to hold it in confidentiality for months. You right. I mean, you hold it and everybody wants to know and, and then you got to deal with the effects, and, you know, people speak there, but it really, you're putting yourself out there at that point. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's, that's just the nature of it. And you deal with it. And, and be it. like, like I said, you know, the imprint that you're making the to, to, that you are doing this, that you are taking the initiative to make an impact out in this world is being a domino, being a seed. You never yeah. know. It might not happen in our lifetime, but the seed that you're planting blossoms this tree in a couple hundred years. And that's yeah. the way I look at what I'm doing. I'm, I'm planting the seeds while they, there might be excuse after excuse after excuse after right. excuse as right. to why that's not, that's not possible right now. Oh no, it is possible. If you can think it, if you can dream it, if you can believe it, it is possible. And you know, um, I mean, I, I just think of, um, okay, so we, the live video ended on Instagram. Um, I'm going to share it, but we're still live on Facebook. Okay. And, you know, it's, it, I, 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 I have so much in my heart, like I'm batshit multi-passionate about so many different subjects, you know, that in my mind, mm -hmm. if, if, if people thought are in, more in alignment with this, this train of thought that the world would be a better place, you right, know, and right, it's just, right, right. And, and if it doesn't matter who you are or what you bring to the table, you know, put yourself out there, speak your voice, speak your heart, even if you impact the life of one person a hundred years from now what you did today has the potential to do that Dude, some of the best compliments i ever got was like hey hey chef i think about you every time i cut cilantro and i was like cool i left a legacy yes. <laughs> like, oh and that God. you know and that's what it, and you don't and here's the thing you know you have no idea the impact that you make mm -hmm. you have no yeah. idea you have no idea. I have no idea. It's not until afterwards that you get impact. And I, I kind of leave it this. Teaching online for a while got to me, you know, mm -hmm. because you're just, you're always giving out and it's not there. And there was one night where I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. And at the end, someone chimed in and this woman was like, Hey, Jeremy, I just want to let you know, like, I'm a really big fan. You're really helping me do all the stuff. And, you know, and, and it was really good. You really helped me take my cooking practice, blah, blah. Yeah. And all of a sudden this other woman chimes in and she, and I didn't expect this. And she's like, Hey, she goes, look in 2019, we were there in Carpalo in this November, December. And she goes, my husband and I came to your R and R demo and we loved it. We loved it. It was just hilarious. You were so funny. And we were signed up for your five day program in March of 2020. And she goes, and obviously yeah. pandemic happened. It shut down. We didn't make it. And this was what? So this was in February of, this was January of, of this year. 21. And so she's like, so I've come back on since. And she goes, and I just, you've taught me so much. I've taken a few of your courses and um, my husband has passed since then. Oh. And I feel like we're completing the trip to see you because I'm learning so much from the cooking because he was the chef yeah. in the family. Oh. And I feel like you're teaching me how to cook. You're keeping him alive and it's kind of finishing out our plans to see you. So like, Honestly, I was having a day where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And then that gets shared with oh. me in that moment. And I realized like, dude, this is so much beyond me that like, yeah. mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You know, exactly. I had another woman, she took my 16 weeks. She takes every one of my suit classes. Now, why was she taking the course? She goes, cause her dad was the chef of the family. He was a chef and he had passed away and she inherited all of his toolboxes with knives and cookie cutters and all stuff, but none of her, her and her sisters learned how to cook. So she came to me and was taking the 16 week course because he held all the family events and did all the food. So she wanted to be able to keep that alive and keep that going. So that's what we ended up doing was working together to get that done. So to me, it's, it's never about just the food. It, there's always something beyond that food. There's something else. Exactly. You know, there's a, and no matter what, like we could be triggered. There's, you know, I had a woman in a class one day we, we were talking about, I don't know where she goes. Oh my God. I live. I, we were talking about food in our relationship and she realizes, Oh my God. She goes, I realize I live like there's never enough. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, cause I was the youngest of five children's and I had uh, five mm -hmm. children. I had mm -hmm. four older brothers we had to fight at the table to get the food. And she goes, mm -hmm. and I just realized in this class, that that's how I view everything in my life, that there's not enough. And I was like, here we were talking about our childhood eating memories. 
and this is what comes out of it. So to me, I love food. I think it's a great way to dive into yourself. It's a great way to dive into yourself. It's a great way to build community. It's the ultimate Mm -hmm. act of love or service to oneself or another. And I feel like everything can be learned through it. So when are we going to cook together? (laughs) We very soon, very soon. I think we need um, to do a class. Oh my God. I would love to, I would absolutely love to, you know, I teach a a cooking class. I have a few students um, and uh, it, through the Defa Rick and Licious cookbook, you know, and uh, it's so much fun. Actually, John Corbellini is one of my students, the guy that jumped on to say, hey, everybody. Yeah, nice, John. Um, but, you know, you've mentioned, uh, you know, like the scarcity. So many people have this lack mentality. We all do. I mean, we all like, yeah, you know, uh, through whatever our ancestors, you know, lineage, you know, that that um, that we're here, here again to heal through and, and not and, and heal from that trauma. But um, there's a book, one of my, and I was looking for it earlier. It's usually back here behind me. It's called The Trance of scarcity and whether it's scarcity of time, scarcity of resources, scarcity of whatever, that, that so many people exist in that trance of scarcity, that, that place of fear that there's not enough. So, I mean, and, and I, you know, I say like, you know, in the, you know, the political world and, and, you know, there's, you know, I've got a hoard, I don't have enough to share. And we're, we're, that's ingrained. If you think about like every commercial, think about every freaking commercial that's advertising a product, it's all, on sale right uh, right like and, and and that everything being on sale is is a, is like well it has to be on sale that it sub- programs the subconscious mind to think that it has to be on sale for me to able to be able to afford it and like oh i'm going right, to because right. it's on sale i can save ten dollars today if i go get it right now you know right, and right. um and it, it, the trance of scarcity guys read that book. It's a really amazing book and, and reading, you know, and, and again, you know, the, the, the stuff that Jeremy and I have shared today is, you know, it's not about just like completely immersing yourself. If you're, if you're not on that journey yet, but anything that we have said, just starting, just starting small or starting just one intentional thing, whether it's, you know, what you're grateful for or what you like about yourself. How many times do you hear somebody say, what, what do you love about yourself? And they're like, Oh, I don't know. I don't, there's nothing. Out, uh. But yet, if so, but if you asked, you know, right. like, what do you love about like Mark sitting there? Oh, Mark is this. Mark is that. Mark is a blah 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 blah. blah. And you know, it, it's about like just because that's one of the biggest things for me. I think why people, you know, don't jump at going for their dreams because they don't know what their dreams really are because they don't know you know, like who they are and self-awareness and, and knowing oneself and, and then like, wow, I, I love that. And that, that it makes me excited to share that. And clearly you have found that, yes, yes. you know, through spirituality, through food, through, through how you, you know, intentionally live your life. And it's just wow, amazing. Dude. Yeah. Yes, you, had to, you. you got to, yeah, um, well, my God, this has been an empowered conversation oh, yeah. for show. Love it. Thanks yeah. for having me. Dad. You are Thanks so welcome. Much. Thank you for being here. And I can't wait to cook together. I can't wait to yeah. teach. We got we we We'll put t- something up. Everybody team. be on the lookout. Let's get something going in the next few weeks. We should do a pop up class basically. We and, should. Uh, yeah, Let's we can do, do it. I'm, I'm ready. I cook and you moderate and wax poetic over me, you know. Okay. So hard time. I think it'd be oh, cool. that would be hilarious. Everybody yeah. tell us what you think we should do. Yes. <laughs> and, and and I love that because funny, entertaining silly you know um it it creates the viewership you know and then it's like oh well that actually looked good i'm gonna try and make that oh my god that was delicious holy cow now i realize that i can do this instead of that and it's healthier it's better for me it's nutritious and holy cow oh my i can't wait till their next episode they're hilarious they're fun you know hey, look if you can watch me cook it goofing around the whole time that means you can cook it at home that's really what we try to nail Absolutely. <laughs> like, like, if you can watch me casually flipping around you'll be fine you know yeah I mean? yeah. yeah awesome thanks for having me stephanie i really so appreciate welcome. it Thank so you great so to much. continue on this journey and uh yes, let's teach together soon for sure absolutely well you stay right here i'm gonna say goodbye to everybody as All i right. end the broadcast Thank you, everybody, for in, for embarking with Jeremy Rock Smith and I on Empowered Conversations today. Till next time, everybody, have a phenomenal day. Whoop, whoop. Au revoir, my friends. Au revoir. Yes. <laughs>